Hello and welcome to another lab uh, for the course nanophotonics. In this lab, we're going to investigate the photonic crystal slabs. I just wanted to start by talking about this specific paper. We used the S4, that's the name of the, the software developed by Stanford, the free software. Um, we used that for nano wires previously. Today we're gonna use it uh, in a slightly different way in the text editor mode um, to calculate the um, the transmission spectrum of the photonic crystals. Slabs. Okay so um, just wanted to point out that if you have time, please, uh, and if you have also have interested, you can read through the, especially the introduction, which gives a very nice uh, warm up for what's called the rigorous coupled wave analysis. So RCWA. Uh, in this analysis, you have to work with, uh, just like we did for the uh, the plane wave expansion, you have to work with the uh, the plane waves of the magnetic mode. So it's based on this uh, relationship, and uh, the transmission results are calculated as a result of an eigenmode problem, very similar. But since uh, in this introductory level course. Uh, RCWA is uh, out of the scope. I will not add it as an additional lecture, but for those of you who are interested, you can get the idea here, and then you can continue to read about the S-matrix S forms. Actually, we already covered that um, while we were introducing T-matrices. S-matrix is what we called as S11s, S22s, S12s, and S21s, those elements. But you can also uh, continue reading that from reference then as given here. Anyway, so uh, as a result, uh, they had developed the, uh, their code and we're gonna use that today. So if you uh, installed uh, or downloaded the, uh, the exa file that I uploaded on Canvas, uh, there's going to be a zip file, and if you unzip the zip file, you will have a, uh, an exe file available. We're going to be working on that file. So now let's uh, also look at the structure we're going to work at. But yeah, let's first look at the structure and then come back to the code. We're going to be investigating this photonic crystal slab with a finite height as shown here. Yeah, sorry about the disturbance. So uh, yes, we are going to be investigating this um, photonic crystal slab with the drilled holes. And the holes have a radius of 0.2a. We will basically change the radius uh, and run it for different cases too. And the slab height is 0.5a. A is the uh, lattice parameter and it's a square lattice as you can see. So here, uh, the dispersion graphs are given for the mode supported inside. So we'll send it at the normal incidence, okay? Originally for the slap waveguide, homogeneous waveguide, we would not be able to couple the light into uh, the slap uh, from outside because that would, uh, those modes as shown here would stay outside of the light cone. So it would stay inside this uh, shaded area. I hope you can see the, yeah. So it would stay inside this area and these modes would not be coupled to the uh, homogeneous slab originally. But thanks to the, uh, the photonic crystals, then we have inside the uh, the line core or the line, uh, we still have uh, guided modes 
These are fully guided modes. Uh, in the third dimension, they're guided by the refractive index change. But we also have these uh, radiation modes, okay? Staying outside of the light cone. But um, these radiation nodes are now accessible. So we can access them from outside by sending the light at a certain angle of incidence. In this case, it's going to be uh, zero degrees or normal incidence. So we are going to be checking the modes at um, gamma point, okay? And we're gonna try to see which modes we can couple by exciting it from outside. All right, so, and remember, I also wanted you to remember that uh, we will uh, examine it on um, the code here that's given here. I mean, based on this program S4, the, the code is given here. So we will investigate it for a unit lattice like this, for the square lattice. Uh, the epsilon 12 is the uh, slaps dielectric permittivity, and we have a radius of 0.2a. And this is basically the code is given here for the in terms of the S uh, S4. So it's based on a, uh, what's called the the language is a Lua. So. It's working based on the, the language, the script language Lua. So let me open the, or let me open it in the better way, Notepad++. plus plus. Yeah, so that brings us this nice code. Um, we have here the first line telling the simulation tool that we are starting the a new simulation. And in the second line, we are defining the lattice. So the lattice is a square lattice, and it is its corners are at one zero and zero one. So if you look at the structure, and if we define one point to be one zero, and the other point will be zero one, so that defines our square lattice, square unit lattice. For this exam, uh, uh, examination, we will use 100 uh, plane wave expansion components, okay? Um, and we will look at uh, different polarizations, so uh, that's what this line is for. We will first start by defining different materials. The first material we'll define will be silicon, and silicon, just for the simpleness, it's defined to have only a real component of the dielectric permittivity, that is 12. And the imaginary component uh, of silicon is defined to be zero right now. So this is how you enter the real and imaginary parts. Likewise, for the vacuum or air, it's shown to be like that. Later on, after defining the material, we have to define the layers. So this is very similar to what we did with the graphical interface on NanoHop's webpage. <coughs> Sorry. We first defined the first layer, uh, the air above. So that's um, our first layer, vacuum. The material is vacuum. The name of the layer is air above. The second layer is the slab itself with a thickness of 0 0.5. And since it is normalized uh, 0 0.5a and these are normalized to a 0 0 a, uh, everything is normalized with the um, lattice constant a. And the next thing we'll do is, if you remember, we'll put a pattern inside the lattice. So uh, we are gonna define pattern made out of vacuum and its center will be at zero zero. Its radius in this case is set to be 0 0.05, okay? So that means that the radius is 0 0.05.
You can change that to 0 0.2 as well, 0 0.2a. All right, and the next thing is to um, copy the air above to air below. So that's going to be the uh, the next layer, the third layer that we have. Uh, we have identical air layers up and down. All right, so we are done with the material definitions and also the layer definitions. Next thing is to define the uh, the polarization of the incident wave as polarization. We don't have any phase, so that is zero. Instant angle is zero. P polarization is zero as well. At this point, we're gonna scan the frequency. So from frequency 0 0.25 to 0 0.6 with a increment of 0 0.01. And this is how they define the for loop. Every time we set the frequency of the simulation in this format, and we try to get the uh, the reflection and the, also the incident wave. So forward is now the incident wave. That's always supposed to be one. And backward is reflection. And in this uh, sentence, we have the transmission. So we are trying to get the power at the end, the uh, in the air below case. We again, like we did earlier with the user interface, we leave zero um, offset there. So we get it right at the end, uh, at the exit, also at the entrance. So these are the offsets we give to collect the uh, reflected and the transmitted uh, coefficients. And then we write down the, uh, the transmission and the um, reflection. So here there's one actually not so meaningful thing that's done here. So forward is assigned to be first the incident wave and then it's assigned to be the transmitted wave. So since this is the last assignment, we are gonna be printing out the, the transmitted wave for, uh, coefficients. Okay, transmission coefficient. And backward, on the other hand, will always be the uh, reflection. All right. And that's going to be in the negative sign because the pointing vector will be in the opposite direction. All right. So this defines the, our, uh, this covers our, uh, the little code that we have. Next thing you need to do is to come to this command probe and then you have to find where you place the uh, your um, S4, the exa file of the Stanford code. So I put it on my desktop, that's an easy place to find. So let's just say desktop, so it's located there. If you do a short search, you will see that, yeah, it's placed there. And likewise, I have my code there too. My code had a name like this. Shan Hui Fan was the author of this paper and he's a very famous person in the field of nanophotonics, especially the computational and theoretical research. Uh, they had published this result with uh, Ioana Poulos, uh, Dr. Ioana Poulos. So he was, he's also a very, a uh, famous person in the photonic crystal community. So that's my code. So what I'm gonna do is S4 PRB, uh, sorry, fan PRB.txt. So that's gonna start calculating the coefficients for yeah, different frequencies. So for every frequency, every normalized frequency, it's gonna bring me the transmission and also the reflection, okay? Since we don't have any absorption, uh, the both of them should add up to 
uh, under normal conditions, one. Okay, so um, this is gonna take some time. In the meantime, let's investigate results, not in this paper, but they're given here. So uh, one thing to note that um, ch while changing the, uh, the radius, the size of the holes, they have observed that their, uh, the moat coupling would be altered at the gamma point. So as I told you, we are gonna be only coupling to these gamma points. They are gonna be accessible to us at normal incidence right now, coming from the uh, radiation modes. And as we are going to the, let's say 0.2a or 0.05a, the uh, actual frequency of coupling will be altered. And if you also examine this graph here, Okay, so originally these graphs demonstrate the transmission for different cases, like the case of uh, different radiuses. So if you have a very small radius, like almost zero, then you really follow the original um, transmission information of the slab, homogeneous slab. So that's this uh, continuous line curve, right? But since we have very tiny but still some holes inside, we couple the light to these radiating modes and that that's why these uh, sudden changes occur. And if you come from the 0.05a case to 0.2a case, so you see that you change the frequency of coupling. So it's now like a the lower uh, frequency, let's call it like 0 0.34, it goes up to more like 0 0.38 here. So that's the first mode that's coupled. And this is also shown, of course I gave you rough numbers, but so instead of coupling it at 0.34 or something like that at 0.05a, the first uh, gamma coupled mode in this region band, frequency band, it jumps up to something close to 0.38 when we come to a radius of 0.2a, okay? So this is what we are gonna be trying to get. Uh, and you can also get the, uh, the other values uh, of, for transmission for these different radius values too. So just to do an exercise. And as you can see, it is still uh, calculating. It is supposed to actually go much faster. Um, let me check what's happening. Okay, so uh, just ran it again. You can always interrupt by saying, just like in MATLAB, control C, that will bring you back to your command prompt. And uh, I just ran it again, so now it's uh, proceeding as expected. Still, it's gonna take some while uh, because of this frequency sampling, okay? Uh, we will not really wait for this. Uh, I already, uh, I'm interrupting it here. I already got the results. Uh, so how are you gonna collect results? <laughs> Basically the old way, copy and paste. So you can select this area, for example, and then uh, you will just come here, edit, and you will just say copy. And then in your text file, you'll copy paste it to your text file. And then if we come to our Octav for visualization, let's go to desktop. I saved them here. So let's load these data. Okay, so now if I say plot R005A, the first information was frequency, R005A, the second information was transmission. Okay, 
All right, so now we can see that we have the coupling of the modes. Like we expected it's around 0 0.34, as you can see here. Let's plot it together with uh, 2A results. Of course, I should say hold. And let's look at it now. Yeah, so it really gets shifted as we were expecting and as the paper already told us here. So once we put them together, we will get obtain this. So with the photonic crystal slabs, what's, what was new at that time is that we could really guide the, um, the waves easily and we would have some access to these semi-guided waves, which are very practical for our uh, use uh, in nanophotonics uh, and also for nanophotonic circuits to achieve nanophotonic circuits. All right, so um, I'll just label the X and Y axis with this one and I will also plot, uh, put this plot uh, together with the other documents on Canvas. Uh, together with my uh, transmission and reflection data that I gathered at the end of the simulation result. But you see how powerful this uh, simulation software is and it's uh, also free. And it's using, as I told you, the rigorous coupled wave analysis. So uh, this concludes, this whole discussion concludes our uh, lab, uh, this lab. And I hope to be with you uh, in another one. Thank you.